Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like the landowner who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. At nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay them whatever was right at the end of the day. So they went to work in the vineyard. At noon and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. At five o'clock in the afternoon, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? They replied, because no one hired us. The landowner told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening he told the foreman to call the workers in and pay them beginning with the last workers first. When those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. When those hired first came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more. But they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested to the owner. Those people worked only one hour, and yet you paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, Friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take your money and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be jealous because I am kind to others? Who is revealing something about God's character in this parable? The landowner reveals God's abundant resources, unmerited grace, generosity, and valuing every person equally. God's love and blessings are infinite. God has more than enough to pay all of us in full, to make all of us whole and perfect. God loves each of us fully, perfectly, completely, regardless of our productivity, actions, or inactions. God is eager to welcome us all home to heaven, to celebrate with God, to feast at the heavenly banquet. The worker who worked all day reveals Jesus, who humbled himself, taking on human flesh, valuing himself as our equal, our sibling. Even though Jesus loved and served perfectly, he suffered and died like us. Jesus is enjoying the same glorious eternal life that all of us will enjoy. Unlike the all-day worker in the parable, Jesus never complains about us or desires that we get a little bit less than himself. Jesus came so all of us can equally receive the full blessings of God. Who do you identify with most in this parable? The gracious landowner? The all-day jealous worker? The excuse-making yet grateful one-hour worker? What is God inviting you to do? Who is God inviting you to be? All of us have aspects of all three people within us. We are called to be like the gracious landowner. God will fill us with an endless supply of love. We are to love everyone. We are to be gracious regardless of how we are treated, what another does or does not do to us. We are to love them. We are to see goodness and beauty in every person. We are to value others equally because everyone is a cherished child of God. Value of others and ourselves does not come from our job, our earthly status, how much money we make, productivity, or how hard we work. Everyone's value is the same. Everyone should be paid the same regardless of how much or little they work. Everyone should have the same amount of food, shelter, health care, transportation, and entertainment. In heaven, everyone will rejoice in the same majestic glory. In heaven, everyone equally enjoys the fullest measure of peace, love, and joy. As Christians, we are called to make earth more like heaven. How do you think we are doing on equal pay, benefits, and value of each person? How are you like the one-hour worker. 
Are you grateful to God knowing that you will receive all the blessings of glorious eternal life even though you are undeserving? Are you grateful even when you have an opportunity to just serve in a small way? Are you able to not compare yourself to anyone else? Do you value yourself equally with others? And how are you like the all-day jealous worker? These people pride themselves on being up early, working long hours, being productive, contributing to society, being active in church, being a great friend and family member. They are eager to answer God's call and give their very all in serving God. All of this is good as long as two thoughts never spring up in their mind. First, that they are somehow earning God's blessing. And second, that they are a little bit better than another person. Working hard in gratitude to God, to give God the glory, to love and serve others, to make earth more like heaven. Perfect. Wonderful. Working hard to elevate yourself above another. Thinking you're a little bit more productive, or a little bit more valued, or you got to figure it out just a little bit better than another person. That is sin. Are you jealous of others? Are you jealous that a non-believer who you perceive to be more sinful to you than you, doing less good than you, is less loving than you, is loved, cherished, and valued by God the same as you? Most of us have a works righteousness thought pattern. Sometimes we even say things like, your service was so outstanding, you'll get an extra star in your heavenly crown. This is what the all-day workers in the parable thought. They did not have a problem with the one-hour workers getting a full day's pay until they were not paid proportionately more for their work. Homa Thilico said, you will never be able to see the goodness of God with a jealous eye. The parable goes to great lengths to fuel, to even justify the jealousy of the all-day worker. The work was hard and fast-paced in the scorching sun. Everyone available was hired at 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m.? Are they crazy? 5 p.m.? It's quitting time. What were those who could not get out of bed, dressed and ready to work until 5 p.m., doing? Were they out rabble-rousing, partying, and drinking all night, hungover, that they couldn't make it to the marketplace until 5 p.m.? Were they lazy, lounging around, playing video games all day, not motivated until 5 p.m.? Those hired at 5 p.m. did not have any good reason for them not being in the marketplace. When asked why they were not working, they blamed the employer, saying, no one hired us. What was the employer to do? To go drag them out of their home and get them dressed so they could work? The gracious employer was not insulted by their blame. The gracious employer did not lecture them for their failure to show up earlier. The gracious employer did not warn them about the poor, lethargic work that they were most likely to perform. Instead, the gracious employer hires them and then pays them a full day's wage. Do you become jealous in these situations? The disciples were struggling with status, value, jealousy, and envy in the context of this parable. They asked Jesus what their reward would be for following him. They pleaded that they were doing more so they should get just a little bit extra blessing in heaven. They were competing among themselves. Some of them even asked for preferred seating in heaven. Jesus responded with today's parable, calling them and us to let go of jealousy and value ourselves and everyone the same. Jealousy comes in many forms. One may be jealous of another person, or of stuff, of money. One may be even jealous of oneself at a different time in their life. Jealous of the past. You know, if only things were like the good old days. Or jealous of the future. Once this or that happens, then things will be well. Then I'll do this. Then we'll have things all together. In Star Wars, Yoda was training Luke to be a Jedi Knight, and he had this to say. 
All your life you have looked away, to the future, to the horizon. Never your mind on where you are, what you are doing. Jealousy, envy, comparison leads to the dark side. Today's parable warns us of the dark side of competitiveness, the destruction of jealousy, which drives a wedge in our relationships. When we feel that we are not getting what we deserve, then corrosive thoughts can soon grow. Comparing oneself to another is destructive. Consuming out of jealousy is hollow. There was a faithful man who worshiped regularly and studied scripture. He discovered, believed, and knew the power of God's grace. He knew God loves everyone equally, even those who openly rebel and curse God. He realized he was saved by grace, yet worshiped and served in gratitude. His belief in grace clashed with his work ethic. His belief in grace clashed with his view of fairness, that those who love and serve more, he thought they should be blessed a little bit more. Over time, these clashes sparked some jealousy. Soon, he began to judge others. And soon after, he began to think that some people were more valuable than others. And his jealousy grew. But God had a cure for his jealousy. God asked him to tell the people that this man despised the most, that God loved them and would save them. But he ignored God's call. Since he knew he was saved by grace, not whether or not he answered God's call, he decided that he would go to a different city in the other direction. Since God loved this man in hopes of freeing him from his jealousy, God, through a series of amazing coincidences, brought this man to the very people he was jealous of. Finally, this man begrudgingly, feebly <coughs> told these people about God's grace. God saved these people as the man knew God would all along. But instead of being joyful, this man became bitter, frustrated, and angry. He became so much on edge that even a worm causing a plant to wilt set him off in anger. Have we figured out who this is yet? It's Jonah. When God saw what they had done, and how they had put a stop to their evil ways. God changed God's mind and did not carry out the destruction God had threatened. This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. The Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see what would happen to the city. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there, and soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But God also arranged for a worm. The next morning at dawn, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. And God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even enough, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant? Though you did nothing to put it there, it came quickly and died quickly. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Why should we work a full day instead of one hour if the pay is the same? We are called to work, to make earth more like heaven, to make earth a place where all are fully loved and valued. And in the process, we expand our love 
and experience a little more of heaven on earth. Jonah was the most successful prophet with the shortest amount of work. He is enjoying heaven equally with everyone in heaven, even those from Nineveh. All is perfect in heaven, so Jonah is free of his jealousy and is rejoicing with his new friends. When you get to heaven, you will enjoy the glory equally with Jonah and all the people, even people you dislike. Jonah made earth more like heaven for the people of Nineveh. Jonah could have personally enjoyed more heaven on earth if he would have gone to Nineveh directly. Jonah could have enjoyed more heaven on earth if he would have left that wilted plant. Instead of being angry and jealous, he could have gone into Nineveh where they were rejoicing and celebrating. Certainly, he would have been welcomed into any of their homes, given a cool drink, a feast, and a shade. He could have had all kinds of celebration with the people of Nineveh. Working a full day cannot make heaven grander because heaven is already perfectly grand. You will equally enjoy heaven with great all-day workers like Mary, Martin Luther King Jr., and Mother Teresa. Working a full day may not make your personal life more like heaven, but it will bring more heaven to earth for all of us. Think of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who worked all of her life lovingly parenting Jesus. Mary had a lot of heartache. But Mary changed her life plans so Jesus could save you. Think of all the joy that that is bringing her. Martin Luther King Jr. helped us see that we are indeed all equal. Mother Teresa showed us that everyone should have dignity, love, and compassion. Let go of your jealousy. Love everyone. Celebrate grace. The good news of the parable, God is relentless. God keeps coming back for everyone. God keeps giving everyone another and another and another chance. God welcomes everyone to enjoy a full measure of glorious, joyful love for eternity. Amen. Let us take a moment of silence to center with God.